this is uh, Chaya Bharatwaj and uh, I'm the founder of a digital agency based in uh, Mumbai, headquartered in Mumbai and uh, been around for quite some time and I'm very happy to host this very exciting session on video uh, which is definitely the future of uh, digital marketing um, and uh, with me are really very very eminent and extremely experienced people uh, in the digital industry and I will allow them to introduce uh, themselves uh, you know uh, Number one, and yes, uh, you know, uh, Hanan, if you could, uh, you know, start by telling a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Chaya. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Hanan. Uh, I am uh, the regional director for India, Japan, and China, uh, India, Japan, and the Korea uh, for Tabula here in Asia Pacific. Um, I am based out of Bangkok, Thailand, where uh, our regional hubs. Is and I have been uh, with Tabula for four years prior to that in different spaces, including in the Indian market. And I am very happy to be part of the panel this afternoon. Great. Great, Kanan. Thank you so much. Is uh, Shefali? Hi, I'm Shefali Khalsa. I am head brand and corporate communication from SBI General. I am based out of Mumbai. And uh, Shefali is, of course, being a little modest, but she's in the insurance sector, uh, sector. And insurance, as we all know, BFSI itself has spent, you know, been the uh, early movers on digital. And uh, insurance marketing has been very big on digital. So she's going yes. to definitely have a lot of insights uh, for all of us. <laughs> Samir, yes, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Samir Seth, and I head marketing for uh, Dolby in India. And uh, as, as you would uh, know, Dolby uh, is a brand that you would have possibly experienced either in the cinemas or in your living room or even on the go on mobile. So, so I'm, I'm, uh, you know, my, I drive the mandate to sort of make the brand far more consumer facing that we've been um, all this while. Thanks. And Thanks. I look forward to the conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Samir. And Samir also comes with a lot of digital marketing experience. Yes, uh, other than Dolby. So that's like a really great, you know, when you are able to do agency media and also be then facing a brand, I think that's the best asset a brand can ask for today. Uh, considering that we do have a dearth of talent on uh, or understanding of how digital marketing works in the industry. Uh, Vidu, please. Two bits about they run Media Donuts in India, which is a company uh, with, uh, it has dual headquarters, one in Belgium, another in Singapore. But uh, essentially we, we are a company that's deep into all kinds of digital uh, work. And we also are official resellers of a few uh, uh, apps such as Candy Crush, Tinder, etc. So I run India operations. I've had a past which is uh, sort of uh, uh, which has taken me through the world of marketing and uh, marketing. So that's that's where I am. Yes, thanks so much, Vidu. Thanks so much. Uh, so yes, you know, so uh, jumping I'm straight. Sure. Are, you, are you able to get me, Chaya? I'm yes, Viva, sure Viva. I'm being audible. Or... Yes, yes. Vidu, maybe okay. you should put put off your video uh, other times so that, you know, because I think you are lagging yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yes, thanks. Okay, so, you know, so we'll jump straight into the topic, you know, it's about power of video marketing. And um, one of the first things, uh, you know, of course, uh, there is a, uh, there is the editorial team has, uh, you know, also given us a direction for this panel. So I'll take it according to that. So, you know, do we, of course, you know, we are all in a lockdown situation. So first, A, we are all working out of home, all the panelists. So if our kids, if our pets, anybody jumps inside, you know, I'm sure all of you are in a similar situation and you will just bear with that. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, first is, you know, has video marketing really become, you know, uh, the answer to uh, the COVID situation? Is it the answer to lockdown? You know, uh, you know, who would like to take this? Uh, you know, Shanan, uh, you want to speak about that to start with? Hanan, sorry, Hanan, would you like to start? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I think that uh, to kick us off really, Video has been a, a secondary part, I think, of uh, our space at Tabula and in the publishing world at large, really. Yeah. Video is perceived first and foremost, maybe as, as a, a, an advertising product. And today with COVID and lockdown, it's become really in the center. 
of everything uh, that uh, that we're doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. That said, from a marketing standpoint, uh, I, I find that when we look at uh, what's happening in the space here within uh, the market in India, is that uh, kind of we, we've clinged to the, the two things that are really uh, most, I guess, well known or we have most experience with in the video space, uh, namely YouTube and then, and then uh, OTT. But I think that uh, we, we may uh, have an, an untapped opportunity because really where all the consumers are going, especially in this day and age, is they're going to consume the news. They're going to look at, uh, read, wait a minute, what's happening today in my city, in my state, what's happening in the country, et cetera, what's happening internationally, all regarding to, to COVID. And there's a huge untapped opportunity for video uh, within, uh, within that space as well. So definitely I think video is, uh, you know, it's the product of now, um, but we should, I think, figure out ways how we get in front of the consumers, yes. understand really where those consumers are. Uh, Hana, if I may ask, since you are you know, in, a, on a, in a platform that allows advertisers to publish their ads in content that's relevant to them. Now, do you see a shift in consumers consuming video content? Uh, is it on your platform? Is there a shift uh, in uh, the number of users? Who, oh Any, any shifts sure. in either advertiser buying or in consumer consumption? So Tabula actually as a, as a platform has moved into, moved into the video space, I would say five and a half, maybe six years ago with an acquisition of a video technology company. But really, I think that the really, the best kept secret about Tabula is that it was actually started out as a video company before we even moved into the advertising space. So it was all about discovery and video discovery before we even moved into, into advertising. So now that we've really acquired, reacquired that technology and brought it back uh, front and center, uh, video is definitely great, uh, but I think that it is still not as, as utilized as it could be. The production costs are pretty much high. And in order to get out, you know, those lots of videos and lots, lots of content uh, all the time, we would really have to move into some AI or some tech that would help us do that, I think, and streamline that process just because of the cost of the manufacturing of those video segments. Yeah, so before we get into AI, Ivita, what about you? You know, since you are again on a platform that enables advertisers to reach very effectively, have you seen uh, any shifts in, uh, you know, the spend on video content or consumption of video content from a very, you know, media ad spend point of view? Are you with me or with Vidu? Uh, with Vidu, uh, uh, I guess he's... Um, um... Sorry, I, yes. I just yeah. got... I, I'm still facing a challenge with uh, bandwidth, uh, I hope. Sorry, I missed the question, was that? Yeah, Vidu, are you seeing any shifts towards, you know, spends uh, on video content or today on, on your platforms? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we've, we've clearly seen shifts, uh, you know, right from the early times of this uh, crisis. Uh, mm. Since March, I would think uh, largely we've seen a, a growing sort of tendency of advertisers to move towards video, uh, which is understandable because, uh, like we all know, these are VUCA times, uh, volatility, uncertainty, and so on. And thus, in these times of uh, trust deficit and uncertainty, uh, marketers are, are tending to lean into digital and video. Uh, and I guess the reasons are not too far to seek because video allows uh, expression to be, to be conveyed much better and thus has higher traction and, and, and it clearly resonates uh, more than the written word or regular blogs, etc. Uh, I guess essentially the factor that, that marketers are driving in is, is, is related to the human touch which is a key need uh, of the hour these days. And thus uh, video being extremely versatile and powerful, mm -hmm. uh, extremely captivating, mesmerizing, really, uh, you know, rich audio video impact. It's allowing marketers to make personal, more engaging, uh, emotional and more evocative, I think, connections. Also, of course, it's tending to turn more and more cost effective and efficacious. So that's, uh, yes. uh, all told, it's 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 going well uh, for video as uh, well for as well as for marketers in general. Yes, absolutely. In fact, for us also as an agency, when we see our reports, we see that you know clients are also 
ready to invest more in the video content because the ROI ultimately is so much higher. You know that we are shifting our spend speed on, uh, you know, on Google platforms, be it on uh, Facebook, Instagram. We are investing so much more today on the media spend on video content. Uh, Shefali, what about you? Uh, you know, are you seeing internally as an advertiser yourself? Are you all viewing the video marketing differently? Is it become a norm, or you know, is it not so much? You know, in the absolutely. forefront. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I mean. Um... All my career of 17 years, I've been always on the client side. And uh, yes, I have uh, seen this, you know, the need of the video. In fact, uh, I beg to defer what Khanan said. I'm sorry if I pronounced you pronounced it wrong. But, he's, yeah, he's going I to give us all a prize. See, at the end, Khanan, out of all of us, whoever pronounced Khanan, whoever pronounces your name, Khanan. Hold on. Whoever pronounces it right, you have to give us an award, okay? Yeah, and it's on record. We are live. Okay. Two nights in Absolutely. two nights and three days in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> sounds sounds good to the highest Shefa, spender on Shefa, the Tabula no, platform. Shefa, 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 Shefa Shefa is, different, we will give different references of awards. We don't want to go to Thailand. Yes. Yeah. Shefa yeah. Shefali is it Shefali is ahead right now. Okay. Is Shefali, Shefali okay with Thailand? Okay, fine. Thailand shopping, fine. We're done. Okay. Thailand shopping is fine, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yes, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I thought we should have yeah. that very clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so coming back to my point, uh, yes, uh, from the brand side, we definitely feel that the brand, the video has been a part of the content strategy or the marketing strategy always. You know, um, I remember uh, since 2012 was the time when all the brands had jumped into the social media. And since then, they were, you know, the, even the platform has evolved a lot for the brands, for the individual as well. But the brands have evolved a lot on the social media platforms. And uh, I would say the social media platform itself is the reason why we all have moved to the video content. There's so much of video all around. In fact, uh, there are some stats that say that 5 billion videos are been viewed on YouTube on a daily basis. So yes, all the brands are jumping into the video. Video has been the cornerstone of the marketing strategy. In fact, uh, I would say to some extent, we build the content around video. We have video banana hai, iske liye hume content, content chahiye. So yes, it's a core uh, requirement. And in fact, there are a lot of um, stats uh, which supports that. And this was much before COVID. So I wouldn't say that the videos are, uh, you know, the result of the COVID-19 or the current uh, scenario, but the videos have been in a place of marketing strategy much before, much, much before. And uh, there are stats which support that uh, today, 85% of the content on Google would all definitely have a video. In fact, uh, they say they also say that uh, if your content has a video, it has 53% higher probability to be listed on the first page of Google. So yeah, lots of lots of stats around. There are some 58% of some stats say that 58% of customers would trust the brand more if the content has a video. You know, if, if their website has more videos to explain. I think, Shefali, that from an advertiser perspective, I don't disagree. And uh, definitely, you know, when you, as an advertiser, when you come and uh, try and, uh, and of course, you have more experience than I in this uh, space, then absolutely a video would be engaging. But uh, when I look at the, at the consumer and how he, that consumer is just consuming content, really outside of, of a YouTube or an OTT, I think most of the, the consumers are, are really reading most of the time, right? And uh, in, with respect to that type of content, I think that the manufacturing uh, costs are high. Definitely on the, uh, on the advertising content for sure, but from a, from a publishing perspective, from a news perspective, from a content sure. perspective, outside of, of, uh, of, uh, of a sponsored uh, uh, so-called uh, arena, I think definitely that holds true. Yeah, overall, I, I agree with you that overall, there's a lot of content on the digital space. And uh, given the context right now, the unprecedented context of the COVID, the, uh, the, the consumption of this uh, digital content has increased immensely. You know, we have seen from the media perspective also that the digital consumption, digital content consumption has really gone up. And uh, yeah, we all have ended up uh, into, you know, consuming this, uh, not just the news element or everything, but everything on digital platform. So yes, not just the video, but a lot of content available, different formats, different tonality and everything. In fact, uh, in this scenario, we have also seen big banner movies also being launched on OTT platform. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Shivali. 
sorry one little bit that i i, I thought uh, may be pertinent at this point in the context of video is that while everything external is getting driven increasingly towards video uh that medium is also coming in very handy for internal communication for marketers and manufacturers and Absolutely. companies organizations typically because they needed to teach their staff so lots of briefings and trainings are getting held over video yes. and yeah. of, of course it has a much longer shelf life people can go back to it refer to it and so on so i thought both internal as well as external communication is getting aided in a long way uh, in a big way by uh, by video overall and just to add one more point what vidu said like yes absolutely even the management uh, messaging has gone now into the video format mm. and just to add that yes the covid situation has uh, you know enabled everybody to uh, with a, enabled rather with one new concept of homemade videos you know everybody right from the celebs to the brands everybody is now you know uh, ready with a video homemade video and uh, i don't want to take the name of the brand but the brands have gone ahead and launched the product with the brand ambassadors shooting the video at home with the mobile and that's a tvc you know that's a tvc yeah. out yeah. right so yeah. uh, i've, yes, I've yes, got a point yes. to make so you know you're talking about shefali to your point talking about you know uh, homemade video and 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 the and the creativity and the and the uh, yeah, you know um, uh, the skill set that we all have you know i i strongly believe from a video uh, you know based content marketing standpoint uh, you know one should leverage the strength in collaboration i'll give you an example uh, to explain what i mean so you know people as we know are extremely creative they're extremely innovative and uh, you know we should find a way to you know work with them collaborate and use their strengths uh, you know to strike meaningful conversations for brands so i'll give you an example what we've done at dolby you know so we realized that this really is the age of live streaming you know where musicians and content creators around the world you know are creating their music at home and they're actually live streaming it to their audiences on social media right i mean that's that's the new normal now there are live gigs happening and right. with this demand uh, you know for uh, and the need to capture great sound at home you know when you're not a uh, you know you can't get to a studio uh, setup you know we gauged the need for a music and a video recording app and we launched uh, you know a, 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 an app called dolby on which is a very simple you know app available on ios and and uh, you know android which basically you know enables you to uh, you know inspiration can strike you any time you know if it's a piece of music anything that you like to sort of share with your audiences you know you record it it'll sound better and and you you know push it out so we've collaborated in fact in talking about collaboration and the fact that there's so much of creativity we've collaborated you know with multiple brands you know uh, for example geo saavn and we created this you know ip called uh, so geo saavn created this ip called uh, you know geo live geo saavn live anywhere and you had multiple artists who went live using the dolby on app so you know again strength of collaboration video based content marketing great conversations great engagement harnessing you know the the social media the power of uh you know video based content marketing uh you know is 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 something that we recently did yeah you know that is very exciting you know the dolby on uh, app uh, i mean ensuring that the ux you know consumer experience will you know is is going to be enhanced it's so uh, thanks so much for sharing and thanks for all those uh, statistics sir uh, shpali uh, absolutely you know all the numbers out there in fact even i was just uh, reading that you know about uh, what more than almost 89% or 82% of the content on the web i mean overall on the web not overall. just uh, is going to be on uh, is going to be video you know video by the next one or two years yes. so yes so absolutely so you know related to this of course now that we are all in agreement and yes even uh, exchange for media is doing this live like we were all discussing yesterday video content with all of us we are all live we are generating the content you know um uh, you know if we could just you know look at you know what what really should be you know the next gen uh, what is marketing strategies you know how to be really used uh, you know what what are the things coming up you know hanan uh, if you could uh, take it up sure so i think that um, when when we think about uh, about tomorrow i mean i think that maybe the brands could could speak better to this than I but I think that really what we're trying to do is a drive better bang for my buck I want to make sure that a, ev- that everything I'm I'm producing I'm getting a, a given ROI I I'm, I'm able to make those decisions about where I want my content to go and who whose eyeballs I'm really after and what I want to, what what are we looking for after they've watched the video right because the video is nice yes. but really what we're looking up for is is the action it's 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 either a uh, something that has to do with the purchase or or something that has to brand recall we're looking for for that so i think that ways to measure 
after I viewed the video and what I'm doing after I've engaged with the content or seen the content is definitely something uh, that could be extremely interesting. And I also think that really, how do we create more? How do I create more? More content to find more users to engage more with my product. And that's really what, what we're all after. How do we help users discover more? So, you know, when I look at the technologies driving uh, some of uh, these activities, we're looking at automated technologies around turning text into video or, uh, you know, creating smaller segments and distributing them out of a larger, uh, larger form video. So really what I personally think and what we are seeing as well is that more and more brands are coming on with the video. We're engaging there, but really what we want to do is we want to do more beyond the video. That is how do you take the video. So one is at the end is the technology that helps you to market it. The other is of course creating the video itself. So some uh, things that all publishing platforms like a Google, Facebook, etc. are doing is helping you to create that video content itself. Uh, you know, automated automated videos are uh, can be done. So that's great. There are many other independent platforms that are helping you to create the videos. And uh, the other end is of course on how do you ensure, how do you customize, how do you you know, reach, uh, you know, so, you know, in fact, if I could just, you know, add a question over here, especially for marketers like Sam Samira and uh, Shepali is, you know, video content is, of course, you know, um, it does require that much more investment. But today we, like you yourself mentioned, uh, the entire uh, TVC was shot in the house. Obviously, the production quality is going to be low. So you, do you see that as an emerging trend? Uh, in the coming uh, months or years? Yeah, so I'll pick up uh, from here. Uh, I would say uh, in the coming years, uh, three things from my POV would be uh, trending. One is uh, such, uh, you know, one is of course those homemade uh, videos. But apart from that, uh, I guess uh, the, the fantastic combination of the video and the I think we lost her voice. Yeah, I was just checking if my connection was. Is she funny? I yeah, I think. You're... Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we lost you in the beginning. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Am I okay now? Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah, so I would say uh, the digital space today is full of a lot of content, and uh, the same consumer has been up, will be approached by a lot of brands. So the only clutter breaking uh, perspective for the for the brand would be personalizing this uh, yeah. videos so i would say the personalized messaging or personalized videos will be the one must think for the brand in the coming years mm -hmm. second is i feel uh, the interactive videos uh, i would say about a couple of years back it was first time that a movie on netflix was interactive and that mm -hmm. movie was yeah. Uh yeah. this movie had uh, you know uh, had a lot of traction in terms of the talk of the town and PR value and all. Somehow uh, the format had not gone so viral, but uh, I'm I'm sure it will go. Uh, it will pick up again and it will go viral for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the interactive. I'm sure there is a lot of permutation combination uh, that Martech guys would brainers would bring in. But um, yes, and um, there's immense opportunity in this space of interactive video. In fact, uh, I related back to one of the uh, conference wherein I had seen a case study wherein an international brand has used or made an interactive video uh, for filling up a form. So all the people from BFSI brand who relate with me that uh, the BFSI is usually very collateral heavy and there is no escape from filling up a form for a customer. So to make it easier, I'm sure this space, uh, we can do a lot of things. Such interactive yes. videos was a wow feeling then. I, I mean, this is about two years back, but still it has not come to India. But I'm sure uh, there's a lot of scope to come. And the third and not uh, third, but not, not, not the last, I would say, the point is uh, the shoppable videos. Uh, from the ad perspective, the shoppable videos is something that is trending. And again, there are stats supporting that 73% uh, more likable to purchase if if there is a video and it, it ends with a buying this. So yeah, that's from my side. Yes. Right. So, uh, yeah. you know, just a couple of points, Chaya. I think, you know, first and foremost, I strongly believe that, uh, you know, video marketing is, is a lot like working out, you know, so you're not going to uh, get a payoff within a week. You know, you have to stay invested. Mm -hmm. You have to stay committed. 
you know, keep, you know, experimenting. It's something new, right? I mean, there's nothing right and there's nothing wrong. And that's the beauty of this medium. So stay invested. Uh, in terms of, you know, talking about uh, trends, um, I think uh, very important to, you know, as a marketer, remember uh, to have a multi-screen strategy and, and extract your video content really well, you know, because I think there's, there's this, uh, you know, popular belief that you can actually repurpose your content across, you know, say six screen types, which is definitely not the case. So, you know, there is a, there is a cinema screen, there's a television screen, there's a mobile screen, there's tablet, there's PC, there is, you know, wearables. And, uh, you know, if you really want to extract your video content well and have a meaningful, you know, conversation with your audiences, you know, uh, don't repurpose the content. I mean, look at yeah. each of your screens, you know, as a st through a strategic lens and have multiple different storytelling opportunities. I mean, that's, that's one of the, uh, you know, uh, beliefs that I strongly uh, have. Um, another talking trends, uh, just, you know, maybe, maybe a one quick example. I think also, you know, consider, uh, you know, strong, uh, creating strong and relatable video content through, you know, maybe creating uh, memorable characters or, or relatable characters. I think uh, from a video storytelling point of view becomes easier. We, we do that quite, uh, uh, you know, effectively. We've done multiple campaigns in India because when you talk technology, you can actually talk technology, but, you know, you can't really explain uh, unless, you know, you, you, you use a tool, you know, and we've used a mockumentary style and we've created, you know, multiple memorable characters. We've, we've have this uh, campaign, uh, which we build over the years called Ghar Pe Dolby Hai Kya. So, which is talking about the living room or mobile Pe Dolby Hai Kya, you know, and, and what are we talking here? We're basically talking about, you know, awareness of quality audio, uh, you know, in, in home entertainment or on mobile entertainment. So just a couple of, you know, uh, nuances of what we've uh, dealt with and, and, and something that's worked for us. Yeah, very interesting. You know, moving from the cinema screen to the mobile screen, I think is one of the biggest shifts uh, you made as an organization that's like uh, really commendable. Uh, just, you know, two things I want to add to what you all have already said and really interesting stuff. Uh, one is, you know, when Shepali said there are no forms, you know, absolutely the bottom of funnel, video marketing. So Amazon has a video that you can watch before you actually make the purchase. And I'm sure if you're going to buy a consumer durable vacuum cleaner, I recently purchased, I, you know, watched two, three videos because uh, before I was very sure that's the one I can buy. And I definitely did not select the ones where there was no video available because I did not know how it would work. So I said, oh, it looks good, but I was not sure. So I just went for the one with the video available. And I think that bottom of funnel, uh, zero moment of truth uh, video is going to play a very big role. Shoppable also absolutely, you know, comes to play. The, the one, another thing I definitely see as a trend is, you know, their low, uh, you know, production value videos. Uh, if there are so many celebrities with millions of followers with low production value videos, it means the audience does not really look for glossy, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, Sazbi Kabi Bahuti kind of, you know, glamour. They like it. There's, we respect that. But they are also accepting real content a lot. And I think we can embrace that when we have to churn out a lot more content. Uh, now, you know, come, you know, you, you, you are, Shevali also mentioned that, you know, looking at this content is also going to be, you know, personalization. And that's where, you know, we come into our discussion on, you know, AI, you know, how can uh, AI, everybody is spoken about and now it's going to become a very big, uh, it's going to play a big role in video marketing. So after we have, uh, you know, the platforms, you know, maybe we do, uh, you could, uh, you know, speak about that first and then, you know, others could join in. Yeah, so I guess, I guess the fundamentals of AI need to get covered first because it's one of those... Uh, you know, uh, uh, tech jargon bits, which is uh, very commonplace in our industry. Uh, suddenly, you have a new buzzword coming to the uh, into the uh, uh, limelight, and everybody starts uh, sort of mouthing the same thing over and over again. So, I think fundamentally, we need to start by understanding what is AI uh, all about and machine learning and stuff. So, in that respect, what we are essentially saying is that uh, it's a technology which is which is enabling automatic. Uh, you know, uh, 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 repetitive behavior analysis. It just—it's just reading patterns of repetitive behavior, and from there on, it just builds automatic preference analysis for a user. And that, you know, let's say in, in very simple terms, we've seen Facebook do it very often with newsfeed, and Netflix, of course, is doing it in the OTT uh, uh, framework uh, very often. So similar things, uh, uh, when it gets applied in the context of video marketing for all of us, our organizations, our brands, and so on, we are essentially saying it just helps us target much more precisely. Uh, 
any targeting which is helping us take you you know closer to the to the end user or the the closest possible buyer would obviously lead to better conversions and uh, and thus the entire entire journey sort of unfold from there uh, so customers are bound to respond much better to video ads which are based on their search history and social interest etc uh, ai analytics of course build on this information and they help us create targeted content also ads that resonate much better with the audiences uh, as things go on i guess things will become uh, you know you you move into a, into a phase of hyper personalization which will even sort of factor in your your payments uh, methods and discounts preferences and so on as you may have you know sort of uh, practiced in the past etc so all in all ai is helping you get get little more precise with your targeting and helping you thereby convert a little more a uh, uh, little better and therefore the likelihood of conversion gets better that's that's fundamentally the the core thing that we are noticing as far as video and ai interplay is concerned and we do so then you know okay so how do marketers actually do that uh you know if you could share or you know how do platforms already do it you know because while we spoken about it and maybe it's happening maybe the audience here would like to know how is ai already there how, how is ai how is ai already at play when they are seeing some video ads like a media donut platform or any other platforms if you could just you know speak a little on that it will really help the audience to relate to what we are talking from a from a marketing standpoint the first thing that typically happens is as you're creating video content you've got few options to choose from which one was is, is going to work better for you you try and get into a testing phase your ai technology would help you sort of get an idea much uh, much better uh, read on what kind of video seems to be working better through testing and this is of course uh, you know getting to see the results before you making large investment so you will you will invest a little across uh, uh, two or three options and you start in, uh, testing them and then you know it's basically like an abc kind of a testing and then you start putting uh, a, a test uh, a sort of a dashboard right up there and you are getting a result about a read about which seems to be which creative seems to be working better accordingly you can fine tune your calibrate your investments much more uh, 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 you you can optimize your investments much better uh, going further into the media space you are really talking about programmatic getting to the picture programmatic solutions are essentially automated ways of buying inventory which are focusing on the kind of audiences that you are wanting to reach your advertising to and that is completely in a way based on uh, uh, ai technologies ai algorithms helping you read what kind of advertising needs to go across to which kind of uh, target groups the cohorts that you are wanting to reach out to so essentially it is it is helping uh, ai is helping us uh, develop and 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 monitor your 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 uh, uh, advertising out in the market so that you are optimizing as you go on in an in an in an absolutely live sort of fashion so there is no lag there you are getting to to do things just as as they are taking place in the market you are you are able to sort of optimize your investments much better uh, all the way through right from testing and uh, going down to the uh, last bit of the funnel we do is it only programmatic platforms that help or are there other ways also or uh, other uh, tools also where you can build ai into video well for our work in the media space it's it's programmatic which is helping us do okay. most of that but, but if you're talking about advertising which is pre media placement then like i mentioned testing yeah, is helping yes, you yes yes but in in the in the yeah but in the media buying in uh, space it is only programmatic that is the solution uh, largely, largely i guess new largely, okay things will keep uh, developing and this yeah. world is ever evolving but right. fundamentally that we are heading okay. okay and i think to an extent uh, publisher platforms also have uh, you know some oh, yes. of these uh, things uh, also right yeah uh, because you have dsps on this side you have ssps on that side the two collaborate and you are you are basically able to merge yes. the two things together so that you are getting yeah. apt, absolutely optimal results sort of you yeah. know following through uh, the right channels right uh hanan uh, uh samir shahali any one of you would like to add to this so uh, Oh, no. I think that there's another breed of uh, of AI, and I think also AI comes in different shapes and sizes, right? You'll have an AI, and then you'll have 
maybe a machine learning, and then we have a deep learning technology, where, which is actually teaching itself uh, all the time. And depending on the kind of scale, the data set that uh, you look at, then uh, you get more learnings. Uh, at Tabula, we have a unique audience of approximately one and a half billion unique users uh, who are constantly reading uh, some sort of content uh, across the globe. Uh, within, within India, uh, 500 uh, websites and publishers approximately. So take that kind of scale plus the deep learning capabilities. And uh, when, when, we work, when marketers work together with Tabula, the one question we first will ask is, what are you guys trying to achieve? Who are the audiences you're trying to, uh, you're trying to reach? And sure, the data layering is all there and we can target maybe the gender and, and, and the income or you know, the interest base, et cetera. But really it's the power of personalization that is the search in reverse, right? The engine that's going to take your content to the people who are going to convert. Sometimes you don't yeah. exactly define them or you think that you want a certain type, but maybe there's another bucket that can drive that value. So from our perspective, being hard coded on these sites and, and I guess uh, being able to deliver that kind of value to, to the marketer, the, the uh, personalization engine that we have delivers a, a value which is, in my, in my humble view, uh, beyond uh, the programmatic buy. Uh, we have just about 10 minutes now. So we will go very rapidly. And so we keep very crisp answers. So just one question for you, Shefali, since you mentioned personalization is important. Are you today investing in, uh, you know, programmatic platforms or AI? Tabula? Yes, you are. Absolutely. You are. Okay. Because and, I also managed the digital part uh, yes. at Jungle. So yes, that's a, that's a part and parcel of the digital plan. I would say we can't really think of a plan without uh, programmatic in today's age. Okay, thanks, Shivani. Samir, anything on that? Are you and a big advertiser today? Are you looking at uh, uh, AI also yourself? No, I mean, uh, big or small, I, I really okay. can't say, but we do, okay. definitely, we do definitely harness the, uh, you know, the, okay. the potential that it has. We've been okay. using most of these platforms to keep the answer yeah. you know, crisp, uh, keeping yeah. five minutes right. left yeah. in mind. I, I just mentioned big because, you know, we do have threshold level spends when we get into this space. Uh, so that becomes uh, definitely a challenge. And I hope that we have that piece of it. You know, whether, you know, even for smaller spends, uh, you know, so the clients can pilot it over that. Uh, the, you know, we have two more really key questions that the Exchange for Media had wanted us to answer. One was, you know, data first approach. I think uh, with the AI, we've sort of really answered uh, that question. But if anybody wants to add that, you know, uh, how do you use uh, data first approach, uh, you know, in video marketing? If anybody has a critical point to make, please, if you could uh, just uh, share it over there. Or we move to the last question. Sure. I mean, uh, just one, yeah. one, one quick yes. comment, you know, if I may, yes. so, you know, to my, to my earlier point of, you know, having a multi-screen you know, strategy for yes. video content, I think a data first approach, uh, you know, can actually ensure that you're targeting the right audience with the right messaging at the right time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and as long as you're clear whether the objective is, is engagement or whether it's reach. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's something that we practice and we believe that, you know, the, the six screens are different and there's a different science and an art, uh, you know, to, to leverage them. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Amir. Uh, uh, so now we just have, we go to the last question, uh, which was uh, the last uh, point that, uh, you know, the team had shared, which was, you know, a viral videos. Of course, nobody wants to spend too much on media. They, I mean, we, uh, anyway, you know, let's face it, we are businesses, we want to be profitable, you know, be it the client or the agency. We want to maximize our ROI and all the investments we make. Um, and, you know, yes, viral videos, you know, there were a few uh, that fi finally make the cut and you see them on WhatsApp and you know you made it. Okay. So what is, is there a challenge, uh, you know, uh, Shefali, you know, ideally, you know, being the marketer over here, you know, it would be great if you could share your views on, on this. So, um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, content around and a lot of, of course, every brand, uh, established brand would have their agencies supporting them for a lot of video yeah. ideas. Ye de hai, special de hai. We can do this video, that video, we even, even have started making videos on National Sports Day. So yeah, I mean, video has become a must these days. 
but i would say the challenge uh, in what will click on the digital platform uh, there is no recipe to this while you can google and you can get lot of content on the recipe you know the 10 points to make a video viral and how do you uh, make it uh, more consumable and blah blah things yeah. but i would say the digital platform today is a constantly mutating platform you you just can't understand the dna from the brand perspective uh, also the challenge remains that uh, we can't be too much colloquial like largely i have been i've spent a decade in the bfsi in the insurance sector so i would say from that perspective i i can't really be, go like you know all out to make something which is viral yeah but uh, yeah i'm sure there are a lot of things that can click making it viral they are fantastic you know uh, i wish every marketer would hear you because yes this is as agencies we hear this all the time viral video banana hai uh, viral video banana <laughs> no, it's not possible and then they will show follower ad yeah. it's yes. not possible yeah. yes. there is a separate story altogether there are needs and ways you have influencers to do right. that right. a lot of other ways to do that also right. but that's a yeah. 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 i'm talking about the organic virality right That, consumers that, cannot that, consumers that, you can't predict consumer preference beyond a point and you never know why one will, something will click or not you yeah. can't make a viral virals are made by themselves essentially yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean the, the, the kind of videos that has gone viral is really <laughs> amazing yeah sometimes somebody has done nothing and it's gone viral and everybody is yeah. watching it and laughing exactly. yeah uh, uh, you know others on the panel would you want to add your uh, you know take yeah. on uh, And if she wanted to yeah. disagree with us, ladies, please do. No, no, no I, I, I just wanted to. I just that's a trap. Laugh. That's a trap, Chaya. <laughs> <laughs> ladies yeah, first. I, I wanted to endorse what Shafali mentioned right at the beginning. You know, if if there were to be a magic formula for for making video viral, then everything would be viral. Why wouldn't any marketer use that formula? but fundamentally as we've seen you know uh, uh, some sort of analysis that has come through from uh, these viral videos that have often come up is that you are really looking for for uh, something which is indescribable an x factor which which just can't be sort of uh, explained by sheer logic you know there there is something which which is if i can call it a touch of bizarre about it uh, for example last year uh, or so all of us in india were i, I think dumb dumb struck by uh this wave that just took over youtube when uh, everybody was watching jcb uh, khod rahi hai you know the jcb fever just took over uh, uh the the internet everybody was jo- just watching at the damn jcb machine digging holes you know what is so great about it so videos of that nature is go around and become viral so you don't really know what is the magic right. formula there but fundamentally uh, i think uh, something quirky uh something which will which will obviously have i guess mostly uh, uh done as as a post analysis or 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 in hindsight it had a unique hook built into it but if you are wanting to create a video which will which will have you know a, a deeper appeal or much better appeal i think we are looking for focusing on what is the key uh, benefit that you are wanting to to communicate to your audiences just like any movie today is getting made or any other ad but since you are doing it in a short format typically you are wanting to do it in some in a manner which is quirky little more different uh, there is a unique hook built in, uh, into it and of course then rest of it which is which is supported by influencer groups and so on which will only help you uh, sort of go viral that much faster uh, just so, one yeah. sorry yep yeah, just just one quick call, you know point i mean i i couldn't agree more with uh, both vidu and shefali no one's really cracked the code you know but uh some basics one could uh, you know keep in mind when you really talk about virality uh you know i i call it the ors sort of approach where o stands for originality you know r for relatability and uh, s i think for simplicity i mean the fact <laughs> if you have all of them you know there are chances it could go a while something that is thought provoking something that is actionable you know something which is you know moment uh, related you know so you know we we keep talking about moment marketing for example so and then pray <laughs> for it to go viral Great, the ORS formula. Very nice. Thanks, Hanan. You also want to add something? I just think that really, I mean, a viral video is always a, a means rather than an end. I think that uh, marketers globally are definitely trying to tell a story. I'm trying to relate to my audience. I'm trying to cap. I want them to remember what they saw and maybe share it and maybe speak about it later. So definitely. 
it's a means to achieve my goal, but no, I don't think that many marketers see it as an end game. Like if, you know, if it's not viral, then, then no. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. You know, I think there are lots of reasons why something can go viral. Yes, there are certain things one can try, like making it very relevant or using ORS formula, like Samir has said, you know, and uh, yes, but you can't predict. It Thanks can be a hit or a miss. Yeah. Yeah. So before we, you know, sort of, sort of, yeah, yeah, please, Shifali, go on. Sorry. would like to add that storytelling is something, a new formula that uh, people have been, you know, sticking to now. And that's also trending these days, thanks to the Instagram stories and all. The format also has been evolving yeah. from shorter format to longer format and going back again to the shorter format. So, yeah, storytelling could be one of the, you know, ingredient for the recipe. Yes, thanks. Thanks so much, Shifali. Absolutely. Brand storytelling and relevance, very, very critical. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much. I'm, I'm uh, Amisha, if you could ping us and convey, are we just about to close? Then, and be, while you reply, before we close, Hanan, who's one that tickets to Thailand? Shifali, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shifali, I'll, please, I, you know, since I, 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 I had this idea, I'll send you my list, shopping list. <laughs> sure. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll yes. <laughs> So we'll put on a clickable video with yeah, all the things 79 available. 79 people have witnessed uh, and more will witness the statement from you and maybe it will go wide. We don't know. Yes. You're sponsoring uh, Thailand tickets. It's all on record. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, so, Yeah, Thank so this, this was great and, you know, great to win Thailand tickets and maybe, you know, the big list can go from the other guys also to her whenever she goes shopping. Uh, and I hope, you know, everybody if we like, really enjoyed, all the participants have enjoyed. There are some questions, but I don't think we have any time for these. Uh, if, someone, if the host, the Exchange Show Media team could... Yes, you may, you may take the questions. Oh, okay, okay. So, yes, so there are a few questions. I hope all the panelists are able to see it or only I am able to see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please share your perspective on the impact on consumer that a 2D animated video can create versus one that has been video shot. Oh, animation versus real videos. Uh, costs are very different. Anybody has any take quickly on this one? Uh, what is a better format to shoot a video, animation or real? I mean, uh, if I may, uh, I'll, I'll take that. You know, it's it's not about uh, <clears throat> sorry, it's not about the dimensionality, but you know, to uh, to Shifali's point, uh, storytelling. As long as you know that that video can convey a story, uh, you know, can be relatable, can communicate and deliver. You know, from a simplicity point of view, it's not about the dimensions. It's not about animation, non-animation. You right. know, audio, video. It's just the story that you're trying to convey. Yeah, thanks so much. That question was from Abhijit Balurkar, by the way. Thank you, Abhijit, for your question. And hope that answers. Uh, Jay Sharma asks, uh, hello everyone. A uh, quick question, what are the key matrices to measure the success of a video game? Uh, well, typically, uh, yeah, yeah, typically, please go ahead. Yeah, so clicks leading to view through rates uh, because you're wanting people to sort of go through the entirety of the video. Ideally, you're looking for quartile wise uh, video uh, uh, viewing analysis. That is, uh, you know, the, the best way to look at things, of course, assuming that you're delivering on target, the in target reach is, is, is good. Uh, so, so I would say CTRs, ITRs and VTRs, uh, which is click through rates, in target reach and uh, video through rates. I would just add CPVs also. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Sayan Mukherjee asks, high production value has been replaced by the value of context-driven content. More than personalization, original content is extremely important. That is where, uh, you know, yes, uh, the machine learning algorithms are limited, as they suggest, based on previous usage. So what are we doing as an industry to promote originality and creativity? Yeah. So yeah. anyone uh, want to take that? So I would say to some extent, the storytelling format, the new format, uh, definitely keeps the uh, originality or the creativity up. Uh, a story definitely comes from human, right? Uh, right? Some or the other story, and which is what it keeps interesting. Yeah, I think, yes. So it's not like it's going to be, we are going to build content basis ML. You know, it's only going to influence uh, and make it, uh, make, mm -hmm. you know, that's about it. So I hope that it helps you. Uh, Muskan asks, 
Muskan Sharma is asking, uh, what changes do you notice in brands in the space of content generation? It's moving to video content, largely. Yes, that's why we're having this. Muskan Sharma, isilie, we are all here to tell that video marketing and yes, lots of statistics. So yes, put all your monies over there. And I think uh, a lot... In and, and, Sharma, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry, and, and, and about UGC and the fact that there is strength in collaboration, you know, so there's yes. a lot of creativity out there, you know, you know, all of us. And, and if as long as we know how to harness that from a UGC standpoint, you still have a great campaign. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for adding that. Uh, we have a question from Indu Sharma. Uh, what's the current penetration of programmatic solutions in India? Do we have any statistics there? Do Penetration, by penetration, I, uh, if 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 the if the question is directed at what uh, percentage or what proportion of our overall media work is getting driven by programmatic, yes. current numbers yes. are we are talking about uh, about fifty five percent of our overall uh, uh, media getting driven by programmatic uh, uh, engine these days uh, typically. Yeah, that is uh, media donut numbers, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, so overall, overall, overall industry, overall industry, fifty-five years because all the larger buyers are have, are buying through programmatic now. So while the smaller buyers might not be buying using growth, so that's yeah. why the numbers on programmatic are very huge now. I think just yeah, about so two years back it was twenty-five uh, percent, and there's been a bigger shift. I think very yes. rapidly in the last two years. Fine. Yeah, numbers are, okay. are just growing increasingly in favor of programmatic all over. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Vidu. Uh, and the last question is from Akshay Singh. How can marketers ensure that video ads remain non-intrusive and do not hamper user experience? Yes, yes. Important question. How do video ads not come in the way, like a TV ad used to when we were it has to be our and we ad came. Yeah, so we can. Sorry, have, yes, it has to be. It can be more interesting. Yeah. Ad simply has to be storytelling. Yeah. And the second uh, answer, I shouldn't be giving this, but go for a paid version. Yes. No, absolutely. You're, you're right. right. Yeah, you can go for paid version because there are your storytelling should drive the buying and not just, you know, placing it like a typical television ad, I believe, very strongly. Yeah. Yes, please, we do. Please, we do go on. So, so going back, of course, one has to acknowledge that digital was the first medium which gave users, the watchers, the viewers, the, the option to skip ads. So therefore, they gave them the options to not allow ads to be intrusive. And that, of course, remains largely true even today. And beyond that, uh, you know, uh, I think in one, in at least one section of digital work, which is to do with, uh, let's say, uh, you want to place your advertising within gaming ads or any such uh, uh, apps which, which are engaging uh, users much more deeply, you are essentially rewarded for, for, for watching videos. So you are, in a way, opting in the user and asking their permission to, to beam an advertising uh, piece of them. So that uh, I think is something that only digital allows. Otherwise the linear advertising, which is or linear te television advertising just goes on unabated. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how we buy can absolutely determine, you know, how you plan your uh, outlay and buys. Yeah. You can ensure that as an advertiser, you're not interrupting and interfering and with the storytelling you can ensure that you are engaging the audience and not just repeatedly placing a oh, brand communication, one way speech. Actually, there's just one more question somebody's just posted, uh, which is, you know, what works better when it comes to video based advertising, long videos, short videos, and which are your preferred platforms for advertising? On so 80 percent, 80 percent of advertising, uh, which is uh, which is video based, is of course short uh, 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 videos these days. So we are talking anything less than 30 uh, seconds is largely the the format which is getting driven, and increasingly even there, 15 is supposed to be 15 at best, 20 is supposed to be optimal uh, length, optimal duration for advertising, and more and more marketers are going in that direction. However, uh, uh, the other phenomena that is getting captured, but it's a very small uh, percentage is uh, where I think Shefali also hinted earlier, if you're wanting to build engagement, much deeper connect, then you need to get into a much longer, uh, you know, a, a, a format a story. And for that, you needn't be constrained by the typical one minute or three minute or even five minute kind of thing. We've seen some marketers experiment very well. 
so so if if you have a story to to tell where you need to draw in the consumers you know i i think the a good analogy yeah. would be like we typically uh, uh, say uh, you know most of us are 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 keen to to look at or to watch uh, uh, films which are about 90 to 100 minute uh, you know optimal duration uh, typically that's the length anything longer tends to sort of bore us and so on but there is a section of audience which is increasingly favoring now getting drawn into and sucked into the web series a bit where you are looking at you know seasons after seasons getting devoured endlessly so that is the kind of thing which is sort of you know analogous to the advertising thing so largely short format but a few if you have a story to tell which needs a longer uh, format please go for it uh, to 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 vidu's point you know about long form content in fact you know just imagine you know if you'd like uh, as a film uh, you know patron to know why did katappa sword sound different from that of bahubali you know so then that calls for a great conversation you know where you have the sound designer talking about you know what exactly went into it so that could be long form i mean you really can't explain nuances of sound so it depends it's you know it's about storytelling it's about so there's no right you know whether a short form is better than long form or you know it it depends on the on 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 the objective or what you're trying to convey yeah i didn't yes just to add to what sanir and uh, vidu said that uh, yes uh, the format depends what is the core objective and format also depends today on what is the platform so whether it's a insta instagram platform or whether it's a facebook platform whether it's a youtube platform you can uh, you know adapt that video template video format etc according to the platform requirement as well i just wanted to add my two cents on that is that regardless of how long my video is i want to make sure that my audience is watching so how do i make sure that i get my my content in front of my audience <laughs> at the right moment where they are actually open and happy and uh, in the mindset that they're going to watch it so the content ultimately is the answer to make this work decide whether it's really short long and of course how you buy there was a second part to this question was that preferred platforms for advertising uh you know if you don't want to talk about that that's fine but if somebody wants to answer that i would say it largely depends on what is your tg and then it, then you yes. can choose what platform yes absolutely yeah, so actually the the list of platforms is practically endless now right from uh, youtube is really the the masses possible then you have growing reach of uh, 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 facebook you have uh, uh, i mean all the ott is led by hotstar hotstar is almost sort of you know or bigger than some of the uh, some of the lead television channels and then you have native networks also helping you sort of be in video advertising uh, linkedin for one kind of audiences you have i mean plethora of choices available but fundamentally youtube is typically where things start from and then facebook and instagram and then uh, you have uh, the rest which is ott is driven basically vidu do you think that uh, it starts from youtube because of the price or because of a different factor uh if i got you right kanan uh, you said is it because of the price for youtube yeah well first things first uh, you know as a planner as a media planner you you first want to ensure you uh, typical construct is of a pyramid you want to start by building a, a a wide reach for any campaign that you want to do and that wide reach in the context of video delivery for our markets and as i'm i'm sure uh, you know quite true for bulk of 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 the global markets outside is you will have to have youtube giving us large numbers uh, yes uh, they have priced themselves well but if you were to really ask me uh, uh, facebook pricing is even better just as just as pricing goes facebook is very competitively priced but the numbers uh, for youtube are much larger and then like i said you know hotstar sells itself on the basis of its huge reach uh, in the ott sphere you have people like uh, uh, mx player you know sort of getting the picture talking about large numbers again so so you're building reach first and then you're adding on platforms and then getting to a level where you're saying i've got enough now let me add some more uh, which will give me engagement you know for example uh, uh, linkedin will give you another kind of reach but it will give you great engagement you know for a particular kind of audiences and so on 
Right, and it, it, since you mentioned LinkedIn, you know there were statistics put out by LinkedIn too, and we've experienced that B two B. Also, you know, on LinkedIn, video marketing is the one that's really out coming in. Uh, yeah. So it's video marketing all the way. I think uh, yeah. we sort of come to the close. Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, do uh, you, you want to say something? Otherwise, we're like no, no. at five eighteen now. Uh, let's even get. Yeah. No, okay. so just on the LinkedIn so, bit. Uh, yes. Just yes, on please. the LinkedIn bit. it is it is a proven platform but only for a certain kind of audiences and it's extremely uh, expensive so it's it's uh, it becomes a high ticket uh, uh, purchase you know if you there is entry barrier of a sort which is sort of built into uh, using linkedin but for that niche and targeting we to be very very specific yes so thank you everyone i mean really uh, you know not just saying it's free for life but it was very interesting and Uh, so well, all of you spoke and interacted. Uh, it was just such a pleasure to be the host for this one. Thank you so much, all. Thank you so much, Exit uh, from Media and Amisha for the support. Thanks, and hope to be in touch with all of you as we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. for everybody. Thank Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.